Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, a swell of Braverman, really beautifully torn apart by Yvette Cooper, the Shadow Home Secretary, on the Tuesday's Opposition Day debate about Suella Braverman's situation. Well, I suppose you can decide on that, and because the speech is well over 15 minutes long, I think I'll just bid you farewell here and take care, and more importantly, just enjoy. Mr Deputy Speaker, it is 15 days since the Prime Minister appointed his new Cabinet. 14 days since it was reported that the Prime Minister was advised not to reappoint certain ministers, including the Home Secretary, and it was rumoured the Cabinet Office Minister without portfolio to their posts, on grounds of standards and on grounds of security. 14 days in which it has been reported that the Home Secretary breached security arrangements in the Home Office not just once, but seven times, that she may have also broken insider trading rules, that as Attorney General she was also investigated several times for leak inquiries, that she ignored legal advice on Manston contrary to her statement to Parliament, that she failed to take the action needed to solve the dangerous overcrowding at Manston, leaving her successor and predecessor to pick up the pieces that she may well have run up a huge legal liability for the taxpayer as a result, oh, and breached the ministerial code again in the process. It has been reported, too, that the Cabinet Office Minister sent abusive texts to the then Government Chief Whip, that the Prime Minister was told about this and knew the former Chief Whip had put in a formal complaint, and that there are other complaints against the Cabinet Office Minister, including, most seriously, references to words used towards a civil servant about slitting his throat or jumping out of windows, words that it is reported that the Cabinet Office Minister has not denied using. This is in the space of two weeks. Now, Many people have been appalled by these appointments, and there have also been serious doubts raised among many on the benches opposite who do believe that standards need to be maintained. And the Prime Minister promised us that this would be a break from his predecessors, from the favour for mates culture of the Right Honourable Member for Uxbridge, from the chaos of the Right Honourable Member for South West Norfolk, and instead the opposite has happened. We have people appointed to senior jobs in the Cabinet running the country, not because they can do the job, not because they will maintain the high standards and security that the Government needs, but because of dodgy political deals. So here's what we know. The Home Secretary breached the Ministerial Code. She sent Government documents not only to her private email, but to other people outside Government who were not authorised to receive them, including a backbench MP, his spouse and someone else entirely by accident. She was forced to resign, and then six days later she was reappointed. Now That in itself is extremely hard for people outside the Conservative Party to understand. Because if you were a police officer and you breached your code of ethics or you were responsible for security lapses to the point at which you were forced to resign, and if you were a civil servant or a public appointment or a company employee, and again you were found to have broken your own employment code or security rules again to the point at which you were required to resign, the idea that you could be reappointed to that same job just six days later would be unthinkable. That somehow, because you'd apologised in the meantime, somehow six days off would be just fine. I will give way. Uh, I thank the right honourable well, lady, my right honourable friend, for giving way. Well, does she not agree that the letters I've had from upset civil servants who have seen colleagues make lesser misdemeanours and lose their jobs, yeah. and yet seen the Home Secretary? the woman in charge of national security hold on to hers, doesn't it show that there is one rule for her and one rule for everybody else? Yeah. 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 Well, I think my honourable friend is exactly right, because it's worth, you see, the government does believe that standards on ethics and security should be upheld throughout the public sector or across the economy, just not, it would seem, in the Cabinet, not in the post that is responsible for upholding the law, not in the post that is responsible for maintaining our security, and it really is one rule for them and another for everyone else. I will give way. Well, Lady, for giving way, I am hearing what she's saying, but isn't this 
a very obvious attempt through this motion to divert attention away from the fact that the Labour Party simply doesn't have any alternatives or policies <laughs> yeah. in the area of yeah. 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 and for any other yeah. area, for that yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. This is a simple, naked yeah. attempt yeah. Yeah. to play yeah. the yeah. man, yeah. not yeah. the ball, yeah. and in this case, the woman, not the ball. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, the the Labour Party has set out a whole series of policies, both around what needs to be done to get no, what needs to be done to get neighbourhood police back on the beat, which I'm afraid his party has cut 6,000 neighbourhood police from our streets over the last five years, and also the measures to increase to set out a national crime agency to take on the criminal gangs who, unfortunately, the party opposite has allowed to proliferate and set up a multi-million pound criminal injury industry in the channel. But there is also a responsibility on the government to maintain standards, including security standards. Because it's not just about what happened before that breach. Since the Home Secretary was reappointed, so it, a Home Office review has since found that the Home Secretary had in fact sent government documents to her personal IT seven times in six weeks. That is quite a rate. There have also been reports that when she was Attorney General, she was involved in not one but several leak inquiries, including one involving briefing to a newspaper about a security service case, a briefing notably that was later quoted in court against the government and made it harder for them to get the injunction they were seeking, and another case involving the leak of legal advice on the Northern Ireland Protocol, and another involving the early leak of a court judgment. And then it's also been reported that both the Cabinet Office and Cabinet Secretary advised against this appointment. Now, obviously, this is serious. The Home Secretary is in charge of security and has to show leadership on this issue. She has to be trusted by the intelligence and security agencies and senior police officers not to be careless with information, and she has to show that she takes security and standards seriously because that is what she has to expect of others. I will give way to him in a second. So this is an exceptional situation and it is why we have laid this humble address because if the Prime Minister does have confidence in the Home Secretary not to be careless with public safety or with issues around security then he should release the facts. What other security lapses by the Home Secretary has the Prime Minister, was the Prime Minister informed about before he reappointed her? Did he ask whether there had been other lapses in the Home Office or as Attorney General before he reappointed her? And what information was he given about the other reported leak inquiries and whether she might have had a role in them? Was he advised against reappointing the Home Secretary on security and standards grounds? If the advice and the information he was given was all fine, then tell us, show us. And if it wasn't, start explaining why on earth the security and public safety of our country is put in careless hands. I give way to the Honourable Member. Very uh, appropriate way of starting this intervention, Mr Speaker. Before 2019, the then Leader of the Opposition, the Honourable Member for Islington North, actually cast doubt on our security services by questioning the, the, the intelligence on the Salisbury poisoning. Isn't it really the case that every single Labour MP over there tried to make that an Honourable Member Prime Minister of this country? Isn't the real threat to our national security Labour members on that side of the chamber? So, as members will know, at the time of the Scripple crisis, I disagreed with the words, some of the words that the Right Honourable Member for Islington North had used, and I was very clear about it in this House and the importance of backing our security services. But I would just have to say to him, I have a lot more concerns about his honourable friend, his right honourable friend, the member for Uxbridge, the right honourable member for Uxbridge, who at the height of the Scripple crisis chose to go to Italy, to a place called the Russian Mountain, to a villa in Italy, where he met with, without his officials, where he met with an ex-KGB agent. He took a guest, he didn't report who the guest was. 
He didn't report the meeting with the ex-KGB agent to the department when he returned, nor can he remember whether any government business was discussed. Now, I would just suggest to him that he should be extremely worried about his right honourable friend's careless approach to security and careless approach to our national security as well. Order. I have a load of bit of ding dong there, but please can we now focus on what the motion is before the House today? <laughs> Mr Deputy Speaker, this humble address provides for redactions if there are any national security concerns about the content of the information. It provides for unredacted information. Uh, to be sent to the Intelligence and Security Committee instead, so there can be no security objections to this motion, and quite the opposite. If honourable members opposite compare, care about credibility and security, they should support it now. Mr. Right. Speaker, I thank the right honourable lady for giving away. <clears throat> Isn't it rather more fundamental than this that if a constituent comes to me with something important and I have to solve a problem, it is crucial that, that remains confidential? If I break that trust, I'm letting my constituent down, and if I break that trust, I'm damaging democracy itself, because we must trust our politicians. Isn't that really what's at stake here? Well, I think the Honourable Member is right. that There are um, standards that have to be followed, and when the issues are around uh, government business and the importance uh, of that, the problem, I think, is when somebody has breached the standards to the point of effectively being sacked and then is reappointed just six days later, that is what I think people across the country will not understand. The Cabinet... Oh, oh, I apologise for interrupting. She's making an excellent speech, and this is an incredibly <coughs> important debate today, because isn't the problem here, potentially, that the standards that are being observed by this government have just sunk to low and the ability to reappoint somebody six days after such serious security breaches just brings into question the level at which this government thinks it's appropriate to guard our national security and the response of members on the opposite benches today suggests that they don't take it seriously either and this needs to change urgently. Uh, my honourable friend is right because there has been a real sense over many years now that the uh, government and the Conservative Party's sense of respect for standards in public life has been deteriorating, has been undermining standards in our important institutions. And the Prime Minister promised us there would be something different. And instead, what we've got is more of the same. The Cabinet Office has already recognised that the Home Secretary broke sections 2.1 and 2.14 of the Ministerial Code. There are further serious concerns that she may have broken it a third time and also ignored legal advice that the Home Office was breaking the law. Yesterday morning, her successor and predecessor, the now Business Secretary, said he had had clear advice, legal and policy advice about dangerous overcrowding at Manston, about being in breach of the law and about the need to take emergency measures, which he then took. Now, we have deep concerns, Mr Speaker, about how the government could allow this situation to develop in the first place, why they badly failed to crack down on the criminal gangs that have proliferated in the Channel, why they've allowed Home Office decision-making to totally collapse so that only half the number of decisions are being taken each year, as there were six years ago, <coughs> and so that only 4% of last year's small boat arrivals had their claims determined. So there is now a huge backlog of cases which has led to overcrowding and the last-minute use of costly hotels in inappropriate locations. But there is also a serious question about whether the Home Secretary has just made things worse by ignoring legal advice, allowing dangerous overcrowding and leading to even more last-minute inappropriate procurement and running up substantial legal liabilities when they should have an alternative plan to reduce uh, the backlog, to cut the backlog and cut hotel use <coughs> instead. <coughs> And Plaid Cymru support this humble address. Of course, the context here, the reappointment of the Home Secretary, appointment of a minister without portfolio despite bullying allegations, and all this after one Prime Minister was brought down to scandals and another due to ineptitude. 
Isn't it the case it's not just the specific individuals who are the problem here, but that the systems, the very systems of accountability here in Westminster, are fundamentally unfit for purpose, save for maintaining the thinnest pretence of competency from this Tory government? Yeah. I think the, the Honourable Member has a really important point because the standards in our public life and public institutions have depended on people respecting them. Mm. and depended on people across public life believing in them and taking them immensely seriously. And that's why it's so corrosive when bit by bit they are undermined. And that's why it's so damaging that a new Prime Minister who promised us to be so different from his predecessors in fact is simply reinforcing the same problems and the same damaging situation. I will give way. I'm very grateful to uh, my right honourable friend for giving way. Uh, the Home Affairs Select Committee have just returned from a visit to Manston this morning mm -hmm. and we heard that the numbers have reduced down from f over 4,000 at the end of October to just over 1,200 today. What perplexes members of the committee is we don't understand how it was allowed to happen that people reaching 4,000 in a facility that was only designed for 1,600. How was that allowed to happen? And so I'm very interested in what the Honourable Lady, right Honourable Lady says about the issues of Manston and getting some answers. And we hope very much the Home Secretary will come to the Home Affairs Select Committee to give those answers shortly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my right honourable friend makes a really important point, and I hope that the select committee will be able to get answers. Because if the now business secretary, the former Home Secretary, was clear on the 20th of October that overcrowding was getting badly worse, that emergency measures were needed in order to stop the Home Office breaking the law, why on earth? Did the current and former Home Secretary fail to act in her meeting on the 19th of October, just the day before, a meeting that she described to us on Manston that she told us about in her resignation letter to my right honourable friend? Because it's been reported that she was warned in the middle of September about the deteriorating circumstances, about the fact that things were going to get worse, and about the fact that there was a very high risk of successful legal challenge because of the Home Office breaking the law. She was warned on the 1st of October and again on the 4th of October, but she still failed to take the emergency measures that her successor was forced to take. And she told the House, I have never ignored legal advice. Well, the advice made clear what the law said and how things would get worse unless she acted. So what on earth is her definition of the word ignored? Mm. And the definition I looked up, it says to disregard intentionally. Well, that appears to be exactly what she did. And if it wasn't intentional, if she wants to claim it wasn't intentional and it was somehow accidental, she just didn't really have a clue what the consequences were of her inaction. Do you know what? I think that makes things worse. Yeah. Yeah. I will give way to the honourable member. The Right Honourable Lady for giving way. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, the Right Honourable Lady actually brought an urgent question to this place about a year ago, opposing the use of Napier army barracks for oh. those who enter this country illegally. She's just said then she also opposes, opposes costly hotels. Just where oh. would the Right Honourable Lady accommodate oh. those who have entered our country yeah. illegally? Yeah. Yeah. And perhaps the Honourable Member would recall that what happened at Napier was that the government ended up with a huge outbreak of over 200 Covid cases at the height of a Covid crisis because they were failing to follow basic public health rules and requirements and, to be honest, an incident which the Home Office does not seem to have learnt from again, as we have had outbreaks of diphtheria, of MRSA and of scabies at Manston too. And frankly, if the Home Office and the Government wants to properly solve this, they need to address the total collapse in decision-making, just 14,000 decisions being made a year, half the number that were decided uh, just five or six years ago, a huge backlog that has increased as a result of government legislation that has added to the bureaucracy and that has made those delays much worse. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I thank you, my honourable friend, for giving way. The backlog is also a hugely significant issue. I have, among my heavy caseload, a surgeon who can't move hospitals because he can't get the visa turned around, families who are separated, spouses who can't live together. 
this is the real human impact that we are turning our back on good people who want to work and live in this country because they are caught in the backlog as a result of what the Home Secretary's actions have been. Just before you respond, and this is for both sides of the House, this is quite a specific motion relating to the papers uh, relating to the Home Secretary. This isn't a general debate on the Home Secretary or other uh, government ministers, so just please be mindful of that in any interventions that are made, or indeed on both sides of the House, so that we can focus on what this address is about. Shadow Home Secretary. Thank you, um, Mr Deputy Speaker. And I think the, the, the issue here is about whether or not the Home Secretary is continuing to breach the Ministerial Code. We know that on the 19th of October she had already broken the Ministerial Code twice and may again have done so in a subsequent meeting also on the 19th of October. And really, how many times can a minister break the Ministerial Code in a single day and then still be reappointed six days later? My right friend uh, notes that the Home Secretary says she didn't ignore the law. She doesn't say that she followed the law or complied with the law. And yesterday, the Minister appeared to be saying that she chose to break the law in one way rather than another way, which was to put people out destitute onto the streets of Kent. Isn't that by, almost by way of an admission that there has been law breaking in this case? Well, I think the, um, the important point here is that the, is that. Ministers have a responsibility towards public safety, towards um, security, and to meet standards and to uphold standards. So part of the reason that we are seeking this information and this, these facts about the decisions that were made is whether any of these issues and any of the concerns that had been raised in the Home Office were raised with the Prime Minister at the time, or whether the fact and the way in which the Home Secretary had behaved was raising concerns within the Cabinet Office and with the Cabinet Secretary too. Uh, I will. On what occasions during the last Labour government did the government release legal advice given to it? Particularly, did Tony Blair release the advice given to him on the Iraq war? Uh, uh, the other way. I think the um, uh, honourable member is um, so, right, rewind 12 years. It's, you know, 12, we've had 12 years of the Conservative government in place. We have been very clear that this is about exceptional circumstances. He will know that there has been a similar motion that was supported by this House about uh, the members of the other place um, uh, and similarly again an exceptional circumstances and we have also been clear that if there are any security concerns around the advice or the information that was given to the Prime Minister then those should be shared instead with the Intelligence and Security Committee as the responsible way to do this. But this is part of a uh, I will give way. I will make some progress in a second, but I will just give way to my friend. I'm grateful to my honourable friend for giving way. As someone who spent a few years working as an official in the Home Office, I'm all too aware of how important it is to protect our national security. So, isn't it the case that the government failing to provide the, the report to the Security and Intelligence Committee is actually indicating that it's not a government that's serious about national security. Well, I think that's the problem, because we have these concerns and uh, reports in the papers and these allegations that have been raised. And bear in mind, this is not simply about the security lapses that the Home Secretary herself has recognised and has mit admitted to. It's also about reports about further security, about further leak investigations during her time as Attorney General. And we are simply asking for the factual information about whether these were raised as concerns or not, whether this was an issue of concern for the Cabinet Office and the Cabinet Secretary or not, when the Prime Minister made his reappointment decision. And it goes to a wider problem about the way in which the Prime Minister appears to have been taking his decisions. Because the government has also confirmed that the Prime Minister knew about the complaint from the former Chief Whip against the Minister without portfolio in the Cabinet Office, where there are also very serious allegations, including about the use of language. 
And we should remember too, of course, that the Cabinet Office Minister was previously sacked from the Government by the Right Honourable Member for Maidenhead for leaking information from the National Security Council, and he has now been reappointed to the Cabinet Office, the very office that is responsible for, leading, for supporting the National Security Council and for leading on cyber security too. And this matters, maintaining standards, maintaining the ministerial code and showing leadership on security matters. I give away. It's not the reason that we have to ask for these papers to be put in the public domain, brought to this House. It's because time and time again, the benches on the other side have shown that they lack any judgment on national security, on probity and on integrity. <laughs> They had a Prime Minister that, of course, had to resign in scandal, and we have seen numerous scandals, leaks and dangerous um, regard to national security. So in normal times, yes, the Prime Minister would be able to see these documents. It wouldn't need to be presented to the House because they would have dealt with this. But these are not normal times because the party of our opposite have shown that they do not regard national security in the same way that we do. Well, I think the, um, the Honourable Member um, makes a really important point that national security matters for all of us. And this is a, a time when the national security threats that our country faces have changed. So we face new threats from hostile states who wish to do our democracy harm. We face cyber threats from those who want to undermine our national interest. Cabinet ministers are themselves the custodians of that national interest, and we need all of them to take that seriously and not be careless about the risks that we face, not be careless about the impact of a lack of leadership on these kinds of issues. And sadly, the reality is that we have had a series of Conservative Prime Ministers who have not taken these issues seriously. And the Right Honourable Member for Uxbridge, who, at the height of the Scripple crisis, as I said earlier, wandered off to a Russian villa in Italy, met with an ex-KGB agent, yeah. took an unknown guest, didn't report it to officials, still can't remember if government business was discussed. The Right Honourable Member for South West Norfolk, accused of using her private phone for sensitive government business, and the Right Honourable Member for Richmond, defending them all, reappointing as his Home Secretary someone his own backbenchers refer to as leaky. And if this is all nonsense, then show us. Support the motion. Show us that there isn't a problem. Show us that the Prime Minister does take this incredibly seriously, has asked the right questions, has got the right reassurance. He has only been in post two weeks and already we've got this chaos in place. He said he wants to stand up for integrity, so enforce the ministerial code. He said he wants professionalism, so appoint people who can do the job. And he said he wants accountability, so support this motion and show some accountability to the House. Yeah.